Welcome, what we have here is the AP Physics Workbook Solution for Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. The section is 7.G, Rotation and Translation. Here's the scenario that you can read for yourself. Alright, the one is throwing down the yo-yo freely and the other one has a string attached to the yo-yo as it falls. Here is Part A, this is just using representation. You're going to stretch, sketch a free body diagram on the drop yo-yo labeling all the forces okay before that we have some notes that you can pause and take a look at this is a bucket on a pulley you should see what force is going down what force is going up how it's interacting pause the video if you need it you could see on the bucket itself you have force tension going up force of gravity going down all right so we're going to use this information to first label the first one. Here, we just have the first part, draw the relative length. So the first one on just the yo-yo, that is free fall. We can say this is the free fall one. Okay. Free fall yo-yo. The only force acting on the free fall yo-yo is the force going down. And that's going to be the force of gravity and on the string of the yo-yo we have from the center going to go down which is going to be force of gravity and like the notes the force tension is it going to be here ft that is wrong remember force of tension is applied to the circumference so here you go ft all right, exactly like the notes. Okay, please understand that this is going to be applied for a distance R there. Okay, exactly like the pulley here. All right, the FT, force of tension on bucket, the rope here is on the circumference of the pulley. All right, so now the first part says, uh, which yo-yo would land first, the one in free fall or the unrolling yo-yo? All right, pause, pause the video and try to do this. Again, explain, try to do this without deriving a mathematical explanation. All right, so what I wrote down here is that the drop yo-yo will land first because it is an object undergoing free fall, free fall, not freeway, free fall with no upward force fighting against the force of gravity that is pulling it down at a rate of G. There you go. The unwinding yo-yo, on the other hand, has an upward tension force that is causing, that's caused by the string unwinding that is going against the force of gravity. The net force of the unwinding yo-yo has a smaller acceleration. So I could put a, a, a of the system here is going to be less than the A of the system here. Okay, has a smaller acceleration downwards than the free fall yo-yo. Hence, it will take more time to cover the same distance vertically. So the free fall yo-yo will drop first. All right, part C is actually deriving the equation. So you're going to start um, with some equations and derive it, okay? The first one I'm going to do for the first yo-yo using a kinematics equation. And you might actually, you've seen this version on the formula sheet, you've seen this version, okay? You've seen x is equal to x naught plus x v x naught t plus one half a x t squared. You might see this version, okay? This is for the x horizontally. I'm going to give you the vertical part. It's the same thing, but now it's going to be y, okay? All right. So let's do it. So we have here um, y is equal to y naught plus velocity in the y direction naught t plus one half. This is going to be basically acceleration in the y, but we know the acceleration in the y, right? That's just uh, that's just going to be g, okay? T squared. All right. So it falls. Here. So this is going to be zero. Okay. This is going to be height. 
this is going to go to zero. This is going to be minus one half g t squared. All right. Again, where's that minus coming from? Okay, g is the negative part because negative is downwards. Okay. And then this has this goes to zero because v initial is zero. Okay. And if we subtract this over, we just get height. All right. So if you do not like what I did here, I basically went for I did this. Okay. This final minus final height. The final in the y direction minus the initial y direction, it's the same thing as height. So height is equal to one half g t squared. All right. Okay. So just some negative stuff. All right. Okay. It becomes positive once you subtract this over to the other side. All right. So you could do that if you want. All right. So let's start for t. Okay. So multiply this over to the other side. You're going to get uh, 2h is equal to gt squared, right? So subtract g. So you get t squared, right? So solve for t, square root 2h over g, all right? So you, this is the time for free fall, yo, yo, to fall. This makes perfect sense because this is um, the equation for any free fall object that's going down. You, we did this in our kinematic section, All right? Okay, so the free fall for the second yo-yo is a little bit more complicated, all right? So we have to end up using this y is equal to the same it's the same equation as before but we need to know each one of these pieces all right okay so subtract this over this becomes zero it's the same setup it's h h is equal to all right going to be one half g t squared all right but the g here is going to be completely different why let's take a look for the unwinding yo-yo okay because there is a summation of the forces and the y direction is equal to ma force of gravity minus the uh, force of the tension is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Okay. Solve for it. Okay. Force of gravity, mg, ft is one half ma. Solve for acceleration in the y direction. You get two thirds g. Okay, so notice how the acceleration is going to be completely different in this scenario. All right. Okay, so you want to make sure you substitute it in here properly. One half G is two thirds. Uh, here, let me change this. This, isn't, this shouldn't be G. It should just be labeled as a Y. All right, it's the acceleration in the y direction, okay? Because this is, remember, this is the net, and it can't just be g because there is the uh, tension that's causing the ch a difference in the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, two squared. You're going to end up with h is equal to one-third g t squared, okay? Now, you want to solve for t, so you should get 3h divided by g square root over t. All right, same way. Okay, so 
the 3h, this is 3h over g, why this one is 2h over g. It's the square root of both. All right. So if you would like to take a look here when it asks um, deriving expression for the time, here you go. And here's the time for uh, the second one. Okay, there you go. Those are your two times for the two objects. All right. Um, and let's see. Each yo-yo lands on a stick tape and does not bounce upon landing. Okay. Ooh, it hits. So that's probably a collision. In a co clear current paragraph, length response explain which yo-yo experience a greater impulse due to the normal force from the ground. This would make a very good AP physics question. All right. Pause the video and try your best. This is a collision, so it has some kinematics. It has some momentum in here for this question. All right, so I have my answer here, but I would like to give you some information if you need it on momentum. Here's momentum. We know that the force is equal to the change of momentum over the change of time. We know that the impulse is just defined by the force times the change of time, which is the same thing as just change of momentum. Okay, this makes sense because momentum in of itself is defined by velocity. So momentum is defined by mass times velocity. All right. So if we look at the change, okay, so momentum final, momentum initial is m times v initial okay and if we just look at the way force works force is equal to mass times acceleration and we know what acceleration is acceleration is just the m final minus m initial over delta t right that's how it came to be okay so we can see that the total change in momentum is equal to the impulse you're going to use that idea all right here are your notes if you need it all right, and here's the answer. Okay, so I wrote that the impulse is defined as the change in momentum. That's what the notes are. Both yo-yo has a final momentum of zero because landing on the sticky tape does and does not bounce upon landing. So PF is going to be equal to zero. Okay, because the velocity is zero. The only difference between the two yo-yos were their initial momentum. The yo-yo that has the greatest impulse will be the ones that has the greatest initial momentum. Using the equation of freefall and acceleration information from part B, the unwinding yo-yo will have a smaller velocity due to having a smaller acceleration when comparing to the freefall yo-yo. That makes perfect sense if you look back above. Assuming that both yo-yos have not reached terminal velocity during the free fall, the free falling yo-yo will have a greater velocity as well as a greater initial momentum because momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Therefore, the free falling yo-yo will produce the greatest impulse. Okay. And if you would like to see this should explain this math of what I just said, that the impulse is going to be equal to the change of Momentum, mv final is going to be minus mv initial. And we all know that the m final was zero for both of them. So all we literally looked at for both of them was just its initial. All right. And I said it right here. The unwinding yo-yo will have a smaller velocity due to having a smaller acceleration. Okay. So the second one, same thing but it's going to be smaller because a was smaller. All right. This was larger for the first one. This is for the un. Uh, this is for the free fall. And this was for the unwind. And this was for the unwinding one. All right. Or unrolling one winding. Okay, this was larger, V was larger because A was larger, larger A, larger A, okay, because of larger A. All right, this is my paragraph explaining this. 
So on the test, make sure that you have the paragraph. And if you would like this to just support your paragraph, go ahead. Okay. All right. There you go. If you need the kinematics equation for this one, what they were referring to here is the same as what you were setting up before. Um, but there's no time component. So this is the kinematics for a uh, without time. Okay. We have velocity squared. This is velocity final is equal to velocity initial squared plus one half acceleration times until to x. All right. There you go.